G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys AFL Fantasy Podcast. Today we're going to be re- reviewing a busy round three, talking about gather round trades, and of course, guys, giving you our updates on how our team is going. Let's go! G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys AFL Fantasy Podcast. I am your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys Fantasy. And uh, I'm joined, as always, by Luke Hat. <laughs> Luke Rogerson, mate, the uh, coach hey, of the Oxlongs. What's uh, something, something different about you today? I can't quite, can't quite tell. No, the, uh, there's nothing different. Um, <laughs> Look, the coach, you said the coach of the Ox Songs. It's the coach of the mighty Ox Songs, but unfortunately oh. not so mighty this week. Which brings me to our first point of business today. We threw it out there to the community and there were some, some suggestions that uh, perhaps we'd been engaging in some secret, secret squirrel business, not revealing the ranks of our teams or how our teams are shaping up. Certainly not intentional on our behalf. We just thought you guys wouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> But the Twitter poll suggests that you didn't, that you did, in fact, give a fuck. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to start every Monday's show with just a bit of a recap of yep. how, how we went on the week, our overall ranks, and just to give you guys an idea of our, our credentials. Credentials, of course, yeah. I want to like, of course, of course, for those who've been paying attention, you know, there's a lot of great podcasts out there and a lot of hat winners. Um, on oh. other podcasts. Now we, in terms of credentials, we don't have the hats to well to show off. <laughs> Um, like some of those other podcasts, there's there's hats getting around everywhere, and we unfortunately are hatless. Um, so if you're tuning in for for hat sort of advice, don't tune in here. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? And we don't look to compensate in any sort of way for our, <laughs> our lack of hats. So uh, just th- we'll sort of give an idea of our credentials each week, but um, no hats here. <laughs> this this bit would only make sense to people watching the YouTube and for those listening along in the podcast. You're simply just saying, don't come over here and uh, there's no extra <laughs> context required. Correct. Um, but yeah, no, we are, we're going to give our round round rank and uh, and how we're, how we're shaping up. And uh, we'll, we'll go through this quickly because we don't want the podcast to be all about us. We want to be talking about what's going on in the general fantasy community. But start us off, Luke, coach of the Mighty Ox Longs. How did your team go this week, mate? Is it, uh, you, you alluded to it wasn't the best round. For it you. wasn't the best round. And I, I, you know, but my yardstick is the Content Creators Cup, which is, you know, an awesome initiative. Guesty and Bales getting that Content Creators Cup going for the... Um, uh, the content creator community, and uh, as far as that goes, this week I was very much down the bottom. So I scored a 1909, which was actually enough to move me up 3,000 ranks to um, just inside the top 10,000. So, I mean, moving up in rank is is good always, but 1909 I, I don't think was quite going to get it done this week. So, and mentioning the uh, the content creators cup, there lost to Warney, who's um who's killing it at the moment, and yes, um, sitting down the bottom of the ladder there. So, um, if that gives you any insight, I. I wouldn't listen to much that I have to say. <laughs> Nonsense, mate. We can always we can always learn a lot from you. Um, look, actually, we actually lost to the two highest scoring uh, teams in the Content Creators Cup this week. I lost to Holmesy, who had a massive twenty fifty five, and he was this guy. I swear, is is the king of the anti mods because uh, <laughs> he was messaging me after a few games. I think he traded in LDU or, or, or LDU had poor game, but saying that, oh, mate, you've got it. You're going to smash me this week. And then he comes out and puts up the biggest score of the round and uh, he's ranked inside the top 1,000. So I'm on to you, Holmesy. <laughs> Don't be doing that, that that fake humble guy shit. I know <laughs> I know that your team is killing it. Uh, but I scored a 1945, which again, I wasn't too happy with. I felt like it was a very uh, under par week. However, I too also went up in rank. So I was ranked 5,000 last week. I'm just under the 3,000 rank mark. So after round one, I was outside the top 20k, jumped up to 5,000 and now I'm at 3,000. So the team is moving in the right direction. And we were talking before the podcast. So I feel structure wise, 
that the team is looking in a, in a decent shape. Um, just a few things not quite going my way. We'll talk about some rookie roulette things that uh, definitely swung some things against my favor on the weekend. But uh, overall, that's how the team is looking. We'll keep you updated as we go along. Um, just quickly on credentials as well. well. Whilst we don't have any hats to show for it, in all seriousness, you've actually had a couple of good years. So in the last couple of years, for like, people that don't know, do a little bit of a brag. Oh, oh well, so <laughs> right. we, we started this podcast after the back of me doing a near hat season. I got the... Uh, where is it here? The old, uh, the old 124, which was, uh, you know, custom made by the AFL Fantasy. You can see they've done a really big job. Uh, they're just giving me the old 124. That was my highest ranking season. Uh, and then last year I was at, what, 275, I think it was. So a couple of top 300 finishes. So, look, it's, it's hard. It's hard to win a hat. And um, I understand that <laughs> That's what guys who don't have hats say. Yes, it, it is. And I am one of those guys. But uh, hopefully... You can, uh, you can appreciate the advice and also the fun that we, we try to have along the way. Yeah, I think the main um, thing that we've always said about this one is just like we're, we're just talking about stuff and hopefully it, it brings like some new information or maybe a perspective that you hadn't thought of before and then it's, you know, information is power. Listen to as much stuff as you can. But can I take these off because my neck is actually... Yeah, you were, you were getting to get the, cooked. The, so <laughs> I'm going to take these and... There you go. Oh, no, I'm, I'm caught. All right, while you're doing that, let's go on to Ooh. the next segment here. And the winner of the Norm Smith medal. You're an embarrassment to what you do, mate. You're an embarrassment. Bogs and flogs. Let's review the round that was with some of the best on grounds and also the players who let us down the most, starting with Brisbane versus Collingwood. Not a super fantasy relevant game, but do you have a best on ground for us here, Luke? Yeah, this one, like you said, not super fantasy relevant, but I... I think I might actually like the move of Dacos to halfback. Just back into to what we know. Um, so I know still, I think uh, from what I remember, he still had a little bit of midfield time, but there was a distinct yeah. move of Dacos to halfback. And uh, I don't mind the idea of him getting finned this week, having his buy, plummeting to the bottom of his price, and then moving to halfback and me just cruising on. Cruising and picking up the, the garbage there. So yeah, maybe that move is, is good, uh, but I've put a big maybe next to it as well. So he had seven CBAs, which is interesting. Interesting and uh, look, I think the 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 best on ground aspect of this is that the team is going to do whatever it takes to get him involved. You know, yes. he's, they'll move him to wherever they think that they need him to best utilize him. So it gives yep. us confidence too. He's still going to be Dacos no matter where he plays. I'm going to put the flog here. On the, uh I don't know if you saw this news story. I, I know you did, but I don't know if others saw this news story. But the Lions Vegas trip that has come out in the news recently. There was, like I said, not so many fantasy relevant names in this one. So I've given the flog award to the Lions players. We don't know the names. Uh, involved in that, but a bit of floggery going on there in the lines and uh, some question marks about the culture and the, the team vibe. Obviously, they're 0-3 now, so... Well, I mean, the, the team vibe on the trip seemed up and about, oh. but uh, maybe maybe turn your family sharing off, Charlie. Yeah. Not, not sure oh. on that one. Is, is it confirmed, Charlie? Oh, <laughs> straight slander straight slander straight don't slander. worry nobody listens to this I podcast I don't know but uh, yeah not, moving not right so along <laughs> let's go to North Melbourne versus Carlton what have we got we've got a defender here at the best on ground how good's the she's the she's this mate. is the pick in all honesty this is a pick we fell into early in the season we weren't advocating for, for him and then just the overwhelming kind of tide of the community we, we thought okay we've just got to pick this guy up and I'm glad that we yep. um, even though we were wrong on that one I'm glad that we ended up on it because um, she's 120 plus three weeks in a row ridiculous just cannot even if he tried to put up a bad score so touch wood I probably <laughs> jinx the man but uh, he is Straight he is moss. killing it the flog on the other hand is a player that we were into yes until he put up that Useless game in the preseason. LD useless. Uh, just has not been the start that people who started with him wanted. He put up a 70-odd in this game after back-to-back 90 so far this season and is dropping in cash as someone you would have picked as a value player. 100%. Um, and, yeah, just is not quite getting it done. He's not looking like the dominant midfielder that we would have expected. You've got players like Tom Powell basically outscoring him which I never would have guessed uh, the rise of someone like a George Wardlaw, Wardlaw, despite obviously he missed a chunk of this game looking, I think, uh, what did he have, like a leg injury or something like that, that he was getting uh, assessed. So he, um, yeah, LD useless. He's back again. Oh, man, it's it's uh, definitely a tough watch, and that, that stinky game really saved us. Um, hard one to assess as well, whether or not he's a trade-out or not, or whether you stick fat. Uh, let's talk about Frio versus Adelaide, and uh, you've got a, you've got a little... Uh, Humble brag that you got to put through here. 
y'all know who it is. <laughs> it's your boy Hayden Young. Let's go. Let's go. It's indeed. Hayden Young. No now, question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. We everyone knows how much we love Hayden Young. He's our boy. If we don't know any player. We know Hayden Young. We, we know the ups and we know the downs. We've experienced it all before. And we said on the Friday live show, well, you said... <laughs> What's this wee business? <laughs> I said my spicy take was that Hayden Young would be the top scorer and that he would have 10 tackles. Now, this didn't come to fruition, but... The 10 tackles didn't, but... T- was he the top scorer? He was the he top was. scorer See, by 11 this, points. He, and this is the thing. This could have been massive. For those people that were watching this game closely, you know that in the, I think it was in the last quarter, he had that ridiculous contact below the knees free oh, kick. Yeah. So you take away three points there. And then there was a bone-crunching tackle that happened on center wing right, right at the end of the game, which was high. just a perfect tackle. They called it a dangerous tackle. Oh, that's right. So yep. he loses three points there and loses the four points for the tackle. One So, bro... Guys going 140. Yeah. Ridiculous. He so. loves a contested uh, match. So This yeah. is another data point that suggests that maybe maybe Hayden Young's not the guy that you're banking on against North Melbourne, against West Coast, against these teams. But exactly. he, he likes it in there tough, which for a guy with a ponytail, I did, <laughs> I did not pick. But, bro... He's yeah. in there. He loves he, it. He, he in, he's in there. He loves the contested ball. So he, I do think, will we'll play better in those uh, you know, in and under kind of games. The flog for this one is Nat Fife for putting up his worst score of the season despite uh, playing out the entire game. Yeah. Did worse this game than even when he was subbed last week. And his, you know, someone that we maybe were targeting after round one. Um, and now he looks like someone who is not scoring much better than rookies that you could have had in that spot anyway. Going into Carlton, Port Adelaide. Two tough matchups. So I think he is deserving of the Flog Award and just has people who have him asking more questions than I think they want to do at this time of the year. So Fifey, you were getting the Flog Award. Essendon versus St. Killer. There was points galore in oh this God. game. Lots of bogs to choose from, but I think there was one who stepped it up above everyone else. Who was it? Nick the wax Martin. <laughs> this guy is waxier than a surfboard. This yep. guy is waxier than my hair in 2007. This guy, oh. this guy loves getting cheap <laughs> pill. He does, doesn't he? 44 touches, So mate. it's an Essendon record. I know that uh, the volcano went off and, and poo-pooed because of the kick-in stats. And mm. I'm quietly sitting there thinking, no, nah, no, nah, we like the kick-in yeah, stats. Let's get, let's get those around. Fantasy coaches. It's, there's a, there is a small group of people that like those kick-in stats. Um, but... That's what you want from a guy that you picked as a value pick that we're going to swing to defense in a couple of weeks' time. So uh, leave a spot for Nicky Martin because yes. he's hanging around. I think he's a top six defender, that's for sure. The flog for this game here, Nazaya Wanganin Miller. And I know a few people, some people in this room perhaps, that traded him into their teams. And the 71 after the 122 that he put up last week was not yeah. what people were looking for. Can I defend myself as not just a dirty chaser the, of the score? Let me defend the, myself the for a second. Yours, mate. Uh, so I had the option between trading um, to uh, D'Ambrosio. D'Ambrosio or yep. to Wanganin Miller, right? And the the kind of obvious value play was obviously D'Ambrosio, and I completely yep. understood that. But the thing, once I did that trade and looked at my team, I looked, there was so many points of failure in my team then by trading in D'Ambrosio. If he went poorly, he would be a guy I'd have to get off. I had guys still like Ollie Wines. I had, obviously, Salem at that point. I had Zach Williams. I've got, you know, Fisher, Fife. Jordan, Fife, all of these guys. Yep. And so I kind of went, and I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but I, I went with the fact that it's like, okay, Wanganin Miller, even if he gives me a, a poor score, which he did, He's a guy that I'm not... He, he, he's going to be close enough to top six he, defender in my try to hold him, yeah. So that was the rationale, was just like, don't give my team so many of these points of failure. Uh, whether it was the right choice is yet to be seen. Yeah, I mean, it was a very frustrating game. I, it, it almost looked like they were... I don't know if they were tagging him, but they were definitely not making it easy for him to get those cheap kind of wraparound handball receives, <laughs> um, those switching kicks, which always seem to go to fucking uh, the, the boner. Oh uh, he seemed to live off those. But a little bit... A bit of hope with the turnovers from Riley Bonner that I think Wayne Miller should be fine. But for this game, he is deserving of the Flog Award. We were watching this one so closely. And not only the fact that I think that Essendon maybe didn't want um, 
the wang to to get the pill. But there were so many times that the ball effectively got kicked to the wang and in yeah. came the boner. It yeah. was wang versus boner all day. And yeah. we we were <laughs> sitting on the couch. We were cheering. Like, we were team wang. Yeah. We were cheering. <laughs> Always team wang. Yeah. Well, I mean, I like boner too. But we were che- t- t- like, bloody team wang. And there were so many times. There was a time where wang had a kick out, didn't step out of the square, kicked it, oh, to, I remember kick, this. Kicked it to Bonner, <laughs> who we don't have. Okay, Bonner then kicked it on to the next player who went to hand pass to the Wang and who shot the gap? Boner. Oh, mate. Boner does love shooting the gap. But <laughs> straight through, straight through he went. Oh, that oh, was the worst patch God. of play. That was, that was horrible. But uh, Sickening stuff, really. Sickening. Great if you were on the other side and if you were on the Boner and uh, you were... You definitely stood up in that in that moment there. Uh, let's talk about Port Adelaide versus Melbourne. Mate, I believe you had a VC in this game. Let's talk about it. <laughs> well, I, I was talking about it now. I had an absolute mare. <laughs> Maxi, Maxi Gorn, I'm just, I'm sitting pretty. Now, we, we didn't watch this game too closely. Um, we we, we kind of spat it after the Wangany Miller. Uh, we did. We spat so. it. We said, okay, we're not watching this one. But I'm watching the scores and I'm I was getting a half. Bloody Wang, watching <laughs> watching my VC score just pile up one forty. Oh, Mitch, fuck Maxie you! Look at me, I got, I got the big VC on Max here for him. And then as the game finishes, I cruise in to arrogantly just do my little, little VC do loophole. my little VC loop and realise I've completely fucked it because all my defenders have played. <laughs> so oh. not only did my day, uh, w- you know, was shit with Wang and Ian Miller, but then my day got worse because I couldn't get my VC loop. So let's. L- this is the point of learning for everyone. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about your trade. So you traded in you traded Carl Amon. Yes. And use a bit of DPP to put Elliot Yo into your midfield. So my intention was always my intention through the week was to trade in D'Ambrosio. He played in Monday, so it always would have given me that loop with um with Whitfield yes. in defense. So but that was instead, in my head. Instead I traded in Wang Nee Miller, Yo went DPP, and so then all my players had played. Yep. I'm a fucking so idiot. So instead of instead of Yo being in the defense or someone like D'Ambrosio, uh, D'Ambrosio being in your defense, yep. you didn't, now had no defenders that played on the Sunday uh, that Correct. you could use with a Whitfield to do your loophole. Yep. Both your rucks had obviously already played <laughs> with Sherry and Gorn with Harry Barnett being your other loophole. You were trading out uh, <laughs> Sexton to Powell, so that trade was lost just, in. Do we, have um, to, do we have to relive it, mate? Can we just <laughs> woo up a little bit? We, we said we don't want to talk about our own teams this whole box and flog segment has been all about our own teams it has, but it's a good <laughs> lesson for everyone out there as well now you <laughs> saved yourself with another player we'll talk about in a second yeah. but uh just check your loopholes make sure you're uh, all across it and if you do have i mean we've still got two more rounds of best 18s just put your, your guy on the field loop it with an emergency and you won't even have to worry about it um is a, is a good lesson for that one as well what a noob I'll, okay I'll put you out of your misery thank here. you please do who was your flog for this game flog christian fucking sailor mate it gets Where worse it gets were worse were you mate you were um someone who saved your score last week you're back into the cbas he was there the role had flipped Less back than a little 30%, bit 30 um, i think it still was but but yeah, fifty-two, man. I know. I know it was a touch matchup. I mean, obviously, honestly, we're probably the flogs that yeah, we didn't course. trade him out. We we held fat. He we played. Make we his tried break to play the, even. That's it. Um, but yeah, we've got egg on our face after holding him for a week. He's got to go this week. Yeah, we tried to play the sneaky break even game there, and it just it probably didn't come off. Um, but I'm just disappointed with just a, a just significant lack of thirst from him in the games <laughs> that we've watched. Just hasn't yeah. looked it. Yeah. Hasn't looked near it. Too quenched. Doggies, um, West Coast. Up West down. on ground. Yo, yo, let's go. Did you see his time on ground? No. It's like 65%. Ooh. He got a ton with 65% time on ground. This That's man, beast mode. Talk about thirst. This guy was was very thirsty for the ball. And, uh, thirsty yeah, for so a cuddle too from memory. Very, very good score despite getting flogged by over 70 points. Uh, the flog, just your typical Bevo. Bevo, he's the flog here. Um, I'm sure the Bonson Pelly owners had probably a heart attack. He ended up getting his ton, 103. But for a lot of this game, he was sitting forward and just cruising. Yeah. He did have 13 CBAs. Um, but just a lot of forward time um, and just moving the magnets around where we didn't really need to. It just it's it's just Bevo. It's his award to lose every week for the Bulldogs. Yeah, um, you're not wrong. So yeah, it's it's pretty pretty typical uh, Bulldogs matchup with Bevo just doing weird shit. All right, let's move on to the final game. Also, oh, the last two games: Richmond yeah. versus Sydney. First versus- of all, go Tigers. Second tigs. of all. After stuffing up my VC loop on Gorn, I needed Heaney to do something. And even though it wasn't a 146, Isaac Heaney 
effectively saved my butt. 127. We were very happy at three-quarter time. Could have done a little bit more in the last quarter. But, uh, yeah, 127 was a great score from him. He has not gone below. I think 117 is in his low, lowest score so far this year. So, uh, just getting it done. And the flog... I'm just going to highlight the injuries. Just make it a Richmond podcast for a second. The Richmond injuries are just hurting us because down goes Lynch. Down goes Noah Bolter. Yeah, our yeah. two most probably important players. We've also got a suspension coming for Liam Baker. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've had the, the Gibkiss injury earlier this season. So, Richmond had the victory, but I think the next few weeks, they're going to be rough. Pretty lame. So, yeah. Uh, that sucks. Hawthorne versus Geelong, the game that happened on the Easter Monday. Best on ground? Man, it goes to a rookie, Ollie Dempsey, for people who picked him up. I'm, I'm unfortunately not one of them. I just couldn't quite get him in, in the week that was um, that I should have. And um, he's just going to be a cash cow that just keeps uh, you just keep milking. Can I also just have a shout out to my boy, Warple. Oh. My boy, Warple. 152 it's for fantasy James relevant, Warple. Man. I know, but I'm just, I'm just like a proud dad over here. So, you right. know, he's come so far, mates, from the guy who I was chopping out. He's just... You know, it's just it's good to see the kids grow up and, and get the one fifties. <laughs> what do they say? Lightning doesn't strike twice. Yeah, well, he he captured that lightning in a bottle on this one here. So uh yeah, it was a big, big game from him. Uh the flog for this one is rookie roulette because I had the choice. We talked about rookie roulette at the start of the, the week. Um Dempsey versus Wilson versus Reed. Yep. I had to field two of them and bench one of them. Guess which one I benched? You benched Dempsey, didn't you? Ollie fucking Dempsey, 100 mm. points, sitting on my bench when I've got bloody Wilson sitting there with a 35. Now, it didn't cost me the nearly 70 points that you would think, but it did still cost me about 50 points in the end, mm. uh, which would have been a big difference in my ranking uh, this week. So, Rookie Roulette is just a flog, and I am going to have to play it again this week, and I hate it. I hate playing <laughs> Rookie Roulette this time of year, but... Sucks. Uh, yeah, lost, lost a few points. In the Sucks. Point. Let's get off the bogs and flogs and start to talk about that strategy. I feel like we spent a long time on that one, but there's a lot to we get did. off we, our chest We here. spent 20 minutes talking about nothing, effectively. All right, let's talk about this round and the strategy going into round four. I think that this, this week is one of the more difficult weeks of the entire season because we're probably not quite up to your traditional um, upgrade trades where you're doing a rookie down, a rookie up, or a rookie down and a mid-price up. There's yeah. still a lot of cash to be made with some of those rookies. But we're also probably at that stage where some of those mid-prices that have gone up a lot in value, the value is probably not there anymore. Some of yeah. those must-have trades. There are still some guys that have appeared a bit later, someone like a pal if you didn't jump on him. But a lot of us did. So... What are we doing this week? Like, are we doing still some more fix-ups? Are we doing luxury trades? Can we try and force a little bit of an upgrade, uh, for example? Or where's your head at with terms of like just general trading at this point of the this point of the year, um, being round four? I think. Look, my initial thoughts are that I think there is still scope for some fix-ups if they need to be there. Do you think I'm wrong in saying that straight off the Absolutely. bat? Absolutely. I still think there's a lot of players in our teams that a lot of us will want to get off. So let's say, uh, just using us as an example, like let's say a guy like Salem, he's yep. a guy, if we didn't get off last week, we need to get off this week. I, so I, I think so, yeah. So there's a couple of options that I think you can go there. If you can find some cash, um, maybe you can get him to, you know, somebody coming off a buy. If you want to try and get him to like, if you don't have a Lockie Whitfield and you can find some cash, maybe you can get him there. If you've got some DPP that you can work with, maybe you can get him to a midfielder. I'm in a nice case where I can get him to a forward. Yep. But then maybe there's also the option to say, well, you could just straight swap him to someone like Jordan Clark if you haven't got Jordan Clark, who yep. might still be kind of on the rise going the direction that we, we think. Do you think that there's scope to do sort of both there? Yeah, I, I think this is the last round where really in a perfect world we're looking to do those fix-up trades where we're... And, and they're, they're, they might feel a little bit more luxury, I think, this week than maybe yep. the, the last few weeks. So your players like Salem, players like uh, Wines, if you've still got him, like a five... Uh, Billings and, and other players of that nature where they, they probably haven't done what you'd wanted them to do. I think this is the last week where you're really going to want to get off those kind of players. Yeah. If you don't get off them this week, it, it's going to be a situation where you start to think, okay, I'm going to probably have to hold these guys almost through to their buy round, uh, the mid-season buy round, I should say, because after this week, hopefully we'll be in a position where we can do those rookie downs and ups because, again, some of the rookies as well will have an extra week of cash generation on their head. Yeah. Um, so 
it's maybe a, a little bit of a week earlier than previous years where it was normally that round six kind of mark. But I think next week, round five, we'll be looking to do some of those upgrades, I think, a bit more uh, a week earlier. So I do think this is the final round where we're going to have that ability to just make sure our team is set up for upgrade season, which is going to come for the weeks after where we're really yeah. going to start to make up a lot of points. So do you think that that makes a case for potentially like a fix-up trade this week? Say it's a Salem, say it's a Wines, just going you know either down or sideways to a guy that's popping and then maybe just like a, a rookie fix-up? Like we've got guys yeah. that potentially we can go to. I think um, Gallagher's playing all right for the Bulldogs. He's now just over 300K. Obviously, we've got Harvey Thomas, the Giants coming off one really big score, which has put his break even down. Are these guys that you think that we really need to have going into this week? It's tough because you, it, it depends on like who you're getting off to get these guys in. Now. Yeah. Like, are you trading out like a Darcy Wilson or a Harley Reid for like a Gallagher or a Thomas? Feels like it could um, go. It could wrong. pop just the opposite way the next week. So, those are super luxury moves. Uh, I think if it if it facilitates the other move that you're going to do, then then yes, okay. you could definitely do that. And these guys will make at least in the short term a bit of cash. Um, but in the case of someone like, remember, like Harvey Thomas, he had a couple of really poor scores just before that 100. So there's just no guarantee that he's going to come out and, you know, fly up in cash. Um, it, it feels a little bit luxury because what we know of Rookie Roulette, if there is like, you know, someone dropped on the, the teams that get announced, then yes, it gives it more, you know, that's probably higher priority in okay. that case. Uh, but, you know, for example, if some of those guys are still named and still there, it, it can turn around really quickly. Um, so I, I just think the main thing from this week, from my point of view, is that everyone that you have in your team that you don't want to be there until the buys is out of your team. Yeah. Um, I think players like like a Billings, like a Fife, and those real like true mid prices a little bit less urgent because they're still going to be players that you can upgrade. But if you've got underperforming premiums, um, you know, someone like an LDU, for example, yeah. um, you know, Christian Salem, you could probably have in that basket. Ollie Those guys, what's Ollie, Ollie Wines? Is Ollie Wines is, a, is, a, is an awkward one. I think he probably is more of a mid-pricer. Um, like they need to be out of your side because after this week, upgrading them to a premium is not going to, present you with the points upside that upgrading like one of those poorer performing players, those more urgent guys that need to get out, um, upgrading them up. So it's you're going to sort of be stuck with them in a way. Something I want to ask you uh, for selfish reasons, but I'm sure other people will be thinking it as well, is I've been happy in the last couple of weeks to actually take some cash into the bank knowing that it's just best 18. Yeah. I've kind of been okay and comfortable with that strategy. I'm toying with a few things this week in terms of my cash in the bank but I know that it's best 22. Where do your thoughts sit on best 22 and what that means for us this week? Yeah, it's interesting. I think um, I think the cash thing, like I, I still think you, you don't want to necessarily hold a lot of cash if you can avoid it, but it, it hasn't killed us in the best 18 uh, rounds because obviously it, there's a bit of luck in terms of like uh, rookie roulette and things like that that can, that can go your way or sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but in best 22, all of your maybe weaknesses are going to potentially be yeah. exposed. So your cash can be used to fix up, fix up some of those things. Um, and the points are probably going to be a bit more, there's going to be a bigger gap between the good teams and the bad teams um, in, in best 22. So yeah. if you do have a poor round, it's going to hurt even more in, in these kind of rounds than it did in the last couple. So um, I would encourage that if you can get those, those points and those cash and use that to get points on field, um, then you do you do so because it'll hurt even more then. Um, but it's still going to be important. Like structure is a big thing. Like I, for one, I've been, I've been rolling with two rookies in my forward line um, and I've kind of gotten away with that the last couple of weeks. But this week, I feel like it's going to hurt me um, because those scores have been able to drop off. Whereas this week, they'll be counting. You know, if I have mm. that 34 sitting there from Darcy Wilson, that's going to be a counter towards my score and that's going to hurt. So it's an interesting one. Do we really stress over trying to fix up that structure or knowing that there's another two weeks of best 18 after this week, do we just kind of cross our fingers and hope that it's going to be okay for one week, we can survive one week and then give ourselves those extra couple of weeks to fix those those points on our field up. 
My initial thoughts are like on, on that particular point are like if you bent over backwards and screwed your team to get your structure right for one week and the luck didn't go your way and then you know you've got two yeah. weeks, you'd be kicking yourself, wouldn't you? So yeah. like straight bat this week, even if you're maybe running with a two rookie structure in the forward line and you've got, like in your case, Dempsey, uh, Lazaro, Reed, like these guys to choose from. Um, just play the roulette and yeah. see how it goes. Like you're not, you're not sort of a scenario that someone might be faced with would be like, say you've got a Jeremy Sharp or someone like that on your bench in your midfield, culling him down to a 200K rookie to give the cash to get like one of those rookies up to someone that you're happy with. I, I think it's a bit premature to do something like that yeah. just for the sake of scoring decent in this one round. Because like we said, there is two more rounds after this. So two out of the next three rounds are still best 18. So... You could always, like I said, you can cross your fingers and hope one of those rookies pop. You know, Dempsey comes and scores 100 again yeah. or, or something like that is always possible. Um, but it is fascinating still to sort of see how things go this week compared to the previous two weeks because it is a bit different. You got your headband there, mate? Let's go. Okay. Although I think I've got to get my sound going. Get your sound going, Where is mate. it? Oh, no. Everybody was kung fu fighting. <laughs> Headband on, <laughs> who's getting the chop? Who's getting the chop? Well, Marcus Windhager, I, I had a, a declaration before his game that I thought he was going to be the most traded in player Talk about this premature. week. And uh, I've mozzed the shit out of him. So he's getting the chop for anyone who jumped on him early. Uh, it's rotten luck. He he had the role but scored poorly. And then he's on top of that gone and suspended himself. So How many weeks did he get? Has it come I out think yet? it's just the one. Okay. Uh, they Little might drive by him. They might fen, uh, try and fight it. But... Um, I don't know how successful they're going to be. So he, he's he's a cut anyway because he didn't score too well. He hasn't done what we expected him to do. And again, it's one of those players that um, I don't know if we want to have him basically till his buy around. Um, he might be someone that maybe we look to later, but yeah, 60 with the potential suspension, it's just not going to get it done. So I think he's one to trade out. Christian Salem is someone that who's also needs to be traded, I think, as well. He obviously has the buy round coming up. He yeah. and Jack Billings are probably your two biggest priorities. How about the roller coaster to, that is Jack Billings? To get off. Yeah, Jack Billings, man. Oh 30 points. He went down in price. His break even is shot right back up to 72. Um, so he's a priority trade out. Salem is also a priority trade out. Then both, obviously, being from Melbourne, have the buy around coming up. So it's an opportunity for you to fix those ones up uh, ahead of time. And then rounding it out, we've got Carl Amon, who's just been underwhelming. You traded him out last week. You were eating your own hat, basically, at quarter time when you yeah. scored 40 points. I was filthy at quarter time. But then, then I, 30 I, points after I that. snuck into our group chat and just laid a little moz down little there. Moz. And uh, my, my dad, who owns him, tried to give it the reverse moz. <laughs> but then I played the Uno reverse reverse, <laughs> switched it back, and I had the last laugh. Yeah, so, so he, he stunk it up those final three quarters. The, the Hawthorne team is probably just not a team I want to be a part of part of when it comes to fantasy. Uh, and then yeah. Nat Fife again, is another one we talked about. He's gone 60 in the second week in a row. Every game feels like he's close to another rest uh, again. So I think he's also someone with players like Flanders coming off their bye. Um, you can look to trade him out. Um, so I think the, the Billings t- and slash Fife to a Flanders this week will be a very popular trade. Yeah. Um, and I think for, for good reason. I think a lot of those players can leave. Those are the types of players that I don't think you want to be stuck with longer than this week, uh, for example. I want to pick your brains about these next few that you've got here. I know they're not there on the screen, but you've got James Jordan, you've got Ollie Wines, and then Zach Williams there. James Jordan's an interesting one because he's still got one more week before he's on his buy. I understand it's coming up, but... They play West Coast this West Coast, week. Yes. So is this not the one where you just go, ah, James Jordan's been underwhelming, but we know in the preseason he's a guy that's been able to give us give us 100 plus. Yep. And playing West Coast is like playing a preseason game. Yeah. So is there potential for you to have egg on your face if you move a week early? This is the type of guy that if this was the best 18 round, I'd be looking to trade him and get him up to a big dog, get him up to a, a, a Flanders or something like okay. that. Being that it's a best 22 round, his score against West Coast can be something that I think will be good enough for his price point. His break-even is higher now, up at that 54 mark. And when he just scored 60, his price is probably not going to go up much more than this. But because of the matchup, I do, if I can, I want to look to hold him. If I have some of those other guys ahead of him as a priority to trade out, I would be looking to do so. Um, and then getting him out next week. Because he is a guy that I do think we want to trade 
on his buy round because yep. he's not someone we're going to hold. He's not a premium per se. He is a mid price, so he's made cash. He's kind of done his job, but the West Coast matchup, I think, does save him, assuming you have other things to fix up. He is someone you could still trade out if you've got nothing really else to fix up in your team and you can do that luxury move of him upgrading to a, a Flanders. I think that's still fine. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think that's a save. Wines and Williams are interesting. Wines, just the fact that he's holding up a midfield spot He's just not getting it done. He's not getting He's the a master role of with, consistency. What did he get? Eighty eight again. Um, so it's just not good enough, really, for what you thought you were getting him in for. Like you've got players like um, the 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 boner outscoring him at a cheap, cheaper price yeah. tag still. Uh, you could get him up to a premium midfielder to get you those scoring and those captaincy scores potentially. He's just in that spot where it's a really awkward hold for me. Um, so I'd be pretty keen to move him on if I had him this week because I think after this week, he is that type of player that you're probably going to be stuck with. It's going to be... What if you've got pl- what if you've got plans to make like make him a big dog next week or something like that? It just feels like... It, it feels like it's not a huge upgrade going him up to a 105 averaging midfielder versus so- getting like a rookie up to a premium or a mid-pricer who's a little bit cheaper, like a James Jordan or something like that. So you feel like someone at that price bracket is a downgrade rather than... Uh, This is why I'm keen to get off on this because I don't know. I don't know what he is. I don't know if he's a downgrade, an upgrade, a sideways. It's it's just that, that, that position where it's low priority, but still you're conceding points to other positions and other players. So it's that one that just is never urgent enough to move on. Um, yeah. But is still just putting you behind the eight ball week in, true. week out. So true. if if I do have the ability to, to move him on to something else, I think it would be a good trade this week because otherwise I do think you're stuck with him because he does have that good buy around. But um, Jason Horn francis is probably going to come back. Yeah. If not this week, the following week. Would it be too late to do someone like him to a Bonner in that price bracket? I, the, the Bonner thing is, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Because two weeks, you know, three weeks ago, yeah. we were like, Bonner, Bonner. The next week, we were like, ha, ah, you know, Bonner dropped to 60. And then everyone, oh my God, Bonner, Bonner. There's two, there's a few things there. Like St. Kilda lost. Yeah. I think he had a like, ridiculous amount of turnovers. But you've also got guys like Sinclair and Wangani Miller back there. And I, I would assume that if I'm Ross Lyon, I'd probably prefer the ball in their hands. So do you expect that? To correct, uh, I'd prefer Bonner than Wines in my team. Okay, uh, the price is moving in the right direction. And at least we've seen a ceiling. We've seen a ceiling. Um, he's got Richmond coming up this week, and then he's also got in two weeks' time the Bulldogs at Marvel, which give up a lot of points to defenders. Yeah, um, Giants at uh, Manuka Oval is a little bit of a tougher one. So two out of the three matchups are pretty are pretty good. Bro, my team could be so stinky. I could have Bonner at M4. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. It's, it's a tricky one, and that's that's why it's so tough. Um, I, I'd lean on the price movement at that point. So yeah. break even at 15, he's cheaper. You make money. It's Maybe true. it's enough to get a sale or someone else up. Yeah. Fix up those two things in the one round. That's kind of... I think it's okay. Okay. Um, obviously, it would have been better last week, but that's just <laughs> the value of hindsight. So... Uh, yeah, I'll say that I'd rather have Bonner in my team than Wines at this stage. A uh, couple of names, just like more speculative names on the chopping block this week. If you're a Nick Dacos owner and you and you were even entertaining the thought of maybe trading him at his buy, at like doing something like that, would you just go a week earlier? And well, he's got he's, he's got, got what the fin tag well, this week? Finn, is that right? Yeah, Finn got rested up, so just have a week. Finn. Just get <laughs> get your your fin ready, yeah. your fingers ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you got a big job next week, mate. Well, I think this maybe might be one that you can you can look at the team sheets, for example, yes. and, and see if Finn does come back in. If Finn is in, maybe Dacos is out. Okay. Um, if Finn is not in, you hold Dacos and you hold him through his buy round. Maybe there's an argument just to hold him regardless, but it is that round that, as a luxury move, I would tick it off. I ticked it off last week with him tra- uh, trading out. He gave you 100, but that's still probably less than what you'd want for someone like a Dacos. It doesn't hurt people who didn't have him. He's going down in price. Yeah. If he gets tagged to a, a poor score this week, it is going to hurt you again because then he's got his buy round. So, um, if Finn yeah. goes to him this week, I I think there'll be some more fireworks. I think uh, Collingwood will get over there and give him a bit of what for. Yeah, I think be so interesting. too. It'd be a bit of fun watch if it does happen. Um, the Bond, obviously the ankle, but also played West Coast. So do you read into 
too much there do you think they were just going okay we're going to beat West Coast by a million so we just you know take it easy Bont if you if you started with Bont and you paid up 118 points or whatever he was at the start of the round he's gone 90 104 103 he's averaging 99 not even averaging 100 points so far yeah. this season that's been a failed pick so it's far tough, yeah it's not normally one that I would trade out. His role outside of last week we know was what, no different. We know what he did last year too. We so. know what he did last year. It was a, it was honestly it's a very it's a mirror of last season. <laughs> it, it literally is the exact same what he did last year. Yeah. Maybe he's just one of those type of guys that eases into the year. Um, it's a tough one. It, he's burning in cash. His break even is 136, which is absolutely doable for a player like Bonds. I normally think with a player like this, you hold it. Um, but if we get word of something about the ankle, but the fact he even just played against West Coast, yeah, it, it's got to it, be a good sign. It's true right? if it was bad enough. And he he scores points so effortlessly when he's, oh. when he's scoring points. Obviously, there's patches in games where inexplicably he just doesn't score. But when he's scoring, it looks so effortless. So he tunned up with 16 disposals. 100%. Like. And, and uh, you know, a lot of forward time in there as well. So, yeah, yeah. I think I think I would be holding strong and I think most people will have other things that they'll probably want to fix up. Because um, yeah. it's, you know, like you said, any given week, he could give you 150 and make it look easy. So, yeah. Um, it's a frustrating because yeah. if you've had your time over, you wouldn't start with Bond. Um, we're sort of yeah. uh, pretty confident on that now. But I think you've got him in your team now. Don't give yourself the headache of trying to get him back in later. Yeah. Uh, I think he is someone that he is going to pull, but I'm sure some people will be wanting to drop him. Stick with it. Um, last couple of names you've got on the chopping block here. Darcy Wilson, Harley Reid. The, the prospect of potentially um, you know, milking an immature um, cash cow. Yeah, Do, calling him early. I don't really think I like this at, at this stage. Um, I, I think I, Wilson before Reid... I think is the way I'd go. But even still, like I said before, on any given week, those scores exactly. flip. Cause who, so you're going, you're going to a Gallagher, you're going to a Harvey Thomas. You go to a Gallagher, so you make 1,000. So you're not making <laughs> much cash. And like yeah. you said, there's every chance that that's flip. So I just think I'm going to stick away from that. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think oh, the only scenario is if any of these guys get dropped, like if you see yeah. a Darcy Wilson get, get the chop, uh, from his actual team, <laughs> then he might also get the chop from our fantasy teams and we want to keep that cash generating. But outside of that, I think it is a very luxurious move. I'd rather be moving on some of those failed premiums, failed um, mid prices still at this stage yeah. because those rookies, you, we'll get more rookies pop pop their heads up uh, as the season goes on. So, uh, And it just takes one score to really kickstart their, their cash gener- generation again. Does now we've talked about uh, people that we want to chop. Should we talk about some uh, people that we might look at getting? Yeah, in? some trade targets. Uh, I think if you haven't got Tom Powell in your side, I think that he is someone that it's not too late to jump on him. I think that he's basically someone that we could potentially be keeping for the majority of the season. Yeah. He, he could be a premium for us, so I think he's still at a very cheap enough price. He shows, obviously, the excellent role, so he is still number one for me if you don't have him. Number two, this is where we can start to target some of those more expensive players coming off their buy. Two players that I think are going to be tops uh, in their line um, in Sam Flanders in the forward line and Lockie Whitfield in the defensive line. Now, Flanders, I think, is the higher priority because of the forward line and how poor it is. And if you can get one of those... I mean, if you can get a rookie, if you're cashed up, and you get a rookie up to him, um, as long as it, again, doesn't destroy your team, I think that's a great trade-in. It's huge, yeah. Um, and he is someone that I still believe is going to be maybe... Outside of Isaac Heaney, uh, one of the top two forward lines players in our, in our team this year. What about Whitfield? Is it... Because he's gone up a fair bit in price. Before, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, Before yeah. we talk Whitfield, just because we were talking forwards there, can I just like generally pick your brain yeah, about yeah. some forward things? Listen to so outside of of Heaney, and then of course we've got Flanders there. Listen to the the top averaging forwards so far this season. So you've got Dane Zorko, who's going at one hundred and two, which yeah. was I mean, he's just so injury prone that yeah. like every time in the so last couple of years you would be okay. Then you've got Harry Mackay, you've got Luke Jackson. You got Max King, Brent Daniels, Hogan, Myers, Papley. Per- so we're not in the forward line. Like I'm really interested to see how this plays out because none of those names and names that are like go to names where you think, yeah, that guy's going to be solid for me all, all year. They're guys that have just popped probably a few scores there. Yep. Um, you know, little changes in roles potentially. These kind of things. Um, 
you know, like Ollie Dempsey's up there as one of the top averaging forwards. Does does the fact that we do, don't have much certainty on who those top six forwards are going to be, does it lend itself to a way of thinking where we go? Let's just get everything else sorted. Let's get our back line sorted. Let's get our forward, uh, let's get our midfield all sorted. And let's just cu- kind of keep playing that rookie game in the forward line a little bit or p- keep playing that mid-price a game and just wait to see what evolves. Like it, if I'm trying, if I'm looking to trade into any of those names that I just listed, I'm I, I don't no, think that's you, a good you, trade. You're not doing that. So, w- does that leave you in that kind of situation? I, I think it, I think it elevates the priority of someone like a Flanders because there is a, li- a level of certainty that he's going to be the top guy. So the difference between him and the rest of those names is huge. Yeah. Um. So I think it elevates him, even though he might not be quote unquote as value as maybe some other players on other lines. I think just the certainty of him on a line that's full of uncertainty just gives him that level of let's just get him in, and then we can start to do that. Then we can start to maybe just wait on the forward line. Um. But I do still think he is a priority to get in because of the level of confidence I have with him. Him, I agree, I completely yeah. agree with that. So him aside, he falls into his own yeah. basket. But does it mean but after that? Yes, I think we wait on it. So does that mean that guys like Fife? It's like, well, unless yeah. unless you've got a yeah. great rookie to downgrade to him, it's like, well, we know Fife could give you an eighty on every given week. Like you're right. I, yeah, it's no urgency to get him out who's scoring sixty to like. Uh, Brian Myers, who could just drop a 60 at any given week as well, who's right up there, or, or Harry Mackay, who, again, is a key key forward player. So the only um, so guys like James Jordan, guys like James Fyfe, the only way that I'm looking to upgrade them in the coming weeks is whether it's to Flanders or a midfielder. Yeah. Or if I don't have Heaney or something like that. Yeah, or if like someone else pops their head, head, hand up. Yeah. yeah, so I'm not looking to go like, oh, look at the, you know, look at, Bloody Harry Mackay, he's averaging 101, bring him in. So it's just like prioritise those other positions and just kind of see how it shakes out in the forward line? Yeah, I think I think that is the play. Okay. I, I don't okay. think there's someone, anyone like urgently sort of outside of outside of Flanders really putting their hand up um, that we really need to be getting in ASAP. There is, there is one player that I am keeping my eye on in the Gold Coast Suns as well, and that is Jack Lacocious. Um, okay. Switched to a half back position in the Bulldogs game, scored the 84. He's played half back before. How many sons are playing half back, mate? Well, this was the thing. I think that might have coincided with a bit of uh, sex pistol to the forward line. So, shooting his love gun. Not something, not someone I want to jump on this week. I I do, it's a bit too volatile still at this stage to jump on, but it is one that I may be watching over the next round or two as just a little sneaky, just chuck in your watch list there uh, for me as someone that could potentially rocket up the priority list. Uh, but yeah, still, like you said, no one urgently outside of Flanders in the forward line. Even Luke Jackson, the just the threat of Sean Darcy returning mm. has me not wanting to go there at this stage until we see what that looks like. If Liam Baker didn't have a buy and wasn't getting yeah. suspended, yeah. there'd be some discussion good, there as good well. Call. Yeah, 100%. Um, it's one that we've looked at in the past, but just right now you, you the can't. There's obviously, there's a suspension we are assuming, and then, and then the buy. a buy, which is killer. And it, it sucks. Actually, this is an interesting way of thinking. Is it good if he gets suspended before his buy because his price can't well, continue price to get away stuck. from you? Yeah, because he's going to miss this round, miss round. He's going to play round five and then miss round six. So he's going to have one game in the next three so rounds. So we want a two-game suspension. <laughs> so we you saying? Pri- well, lock the we price don't. away. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Inter- anyway, interesting. Yeah, but he is someone that obviously the role did change a little bit and with a few other injuries that will help him. But there are still, again, some players to come back. Like, I don't know how yeah. long um, uh, some of those guys are out for. Darcy's going to come back in, those kind of kind of types. So still a little bit of a watch. All right, let's talk about Whitfield. Yes. Now, he is someone who's gone up in price. He's $926,000. So uh, he is priced around that 104 type mark. Is the value there for a player like him to trade in? I, I tend to think no. I think you might have missed him. And this is always the fear by not starting him. Yeah. That he's not someone really you'd be really wanting to jump on after his buy because he is more expensive. Yeah, he definitely is. Um, given what he's done so far in the season, it, you know, you start to feel pretty confident that he's top six in that line or, or yep. very much thereabouts. Um, yeah, I, I think I'd be hard pressed to, to pay top dollar. Um, for him at the moment. Interesting as well, like two games that we thought he might really, really fill up. Um, he kind of just went at that flat ton with the yeah. the West Coast North Melbourne. So I don't know if that's sort of suggests that the ball wasn't down that way, you know, too much or whether it's just like it's kind of 
irrelevant it you just, know, to yeah, him in those games. Went, but. Um, but I think if you've got him, you keep him. If you don't, um, you probably spend your money elsewhere. Yeah, I agree. Like you can get a a, a Clark, a Jordan Clark for seven hundred fifty five. So you, you you're saving one hundred and eighty k there almost. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think there's a few other cheaper options that can get close enough. I do think he's going to be a top three or four defender, to be honest. But the value is probably just not quite there. It's a good segue, um, mate, because Jordan Clark's the next uh, trade target yeah. guy. So so how do you? sort of see him is he a guy that if you still have a Salem you're happy to just kind of go a straight swap are they similar in price they're similar in price 755 745 so 10k yeah. jump to get Clark uh, to Salem over to Clark he's got that really good buy around that round 13 buy he's gone consistent 97 basically 97 99 97 so as consistent as they come however the flag for him is a couple of the matchups coming up his next two matchups he's got Carlton and then Port Adelaide yeah um, then he goes west coast Bulldogs, Richmond. So three good matchups after that. So problem is if you miss two weeks, you've probably lost the value there. Yeah. Haven't you? He's still, what, what's he priced at? 755. He'd still be a decent amount of value. Like what do you think he can go up until his buy round for the next sort of 10 weeks? What do you think he can average? I'd I mean, be, is he that 95 sort of guy? Yeah, I'd be, I mean, I'd be pretty confident somewhere between 90 and 95. And then if I was, you know, hopeful, maybe it's 95 plus. Um, so that means that he is priced. So he's at seven fifty. So he's priced at about eighty five. Yeah. So you've got five to ten points of upside there, which is good. I think that's a win. At you know when you're looking to get off somebody who's failing, like yeah, if it if it is Salem or someone like that, um, been remarkably consistent too. He hasn't gone over a, a ton, and he hasn't gone below ninety five. So yeah, he's he's right there. Um, yeah, I think if you could, if there was sort of nothing else you could do, if there wasn't a way that you could get. Um, you know, one of those defenders to to like a, a top lo- guy um, like a Flanders. Not a lot of people can have the DPP to do that, but yeah, um, yeah, I, I think Jordan Clark would be a, a pretty good pick. Because I'm 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 trying to battle with um, do I go him to someone like that or do I try to shoot a little bit higher and get someone in like a Jack Sinclair, um, one of those types that's maybe a bit more of a proven top six player. Okay. Um, but obviously you're paying, you know, an extra $130,000 for. Yeah. Um, matchups are a bit better. He's got Richmond this week. Uh, he's got the Bulldogs in a couple of weeks. He also has North and Hawthorne in a two-game stretch after that. So the run's actually pretty decent uh, for them. Um, you could also look at your boy, Wangany Miller, although after, you know, the performance he put up, maybe your confidence is a little bit dented, but... Um, those guys are just a little bit more expensive. Any of those guys entice you over a Jordan Clark at all? Or, uh, well, I've, I've, I'm on the Wang train now, mate. I'm firmly on the Wang. So, <laughs> and the yeah, the Wang is growing on me. So, I think that it's going to correct this week. That's my maybe it's wishful yeah. thinking, but I, I just can't see another week where we have a seventy Wang and we have a one forty boner. So, the it the seems Richmond... like each week since Sinclair's been back was it last week? Wang and Miller went one twenty. And um, we had a poor score from and Bonner, Bonner the other way around. And then Sinclair was in the middle. Sinclair's just Sinclair's giving it to Sinclair's in the else. middle again this week. And then Bonner and Wangany Miller have flipped. Maybe it's maybe it's Sinclair's turn. To threesome. Um, yeah. I can't see... You mentioned Richmond uh, Giants, Bulldogs coming up. I really can't see any of those teams putting a, a lockdown no. role on the St Kilda halfbacks. No. Um, you know? I don't know, maybe, maybe Wang would be a good option if you could get up to him from, from um, Salem. Because that ties into our Riley Bonner, who's at number five here in the trade targets. Yeah. Is it too late for a Riley Bonner? Well, what you've just said about, about him over Wines has got me thinking, because I've, I've, my trade at the moment um, is Salem through DPP all the way to Flanders down in the forward line, which I can yep. do without, um, without having to make any cash. We haven't touched on this, but he had 17 turnovers on the weekend. It's Which quite, I think was a record. It's quite a few turnovers. It's quite a few. Does this make you worried for someone like him that I don't know if he's going to be dropped? No, no, but no. But with I a break even in the teens, a guy like I don't, I don't see him being a guy now under that eighty mark. What's he pr- like? What are we paying for him now? Uh, so what's he now? Five, no, six hundred basically. So at six hundred, oh, I don't have it off the top of my head. He's probably mm. about that sixty-five. Uh, sort of priced that figure, showing a ceiling like that. Yeah, I know about he's, oh, sorry, sixty-seven. I know he's showing that floor as well, but he's I, probably still got about ten to fifteen points upside, which yeah, is still, I think so, decent. Oh, um, it's definitely something I'll consider from Wines because yeah. if, if if there's a guy that can give me a better score than Wines on any you know given week, then yeah, 
Maybe it's maybe it's the option. Yeah, he's gone up nearly 70k this week, so it does feel a bit dirty getting him in now. But when you compare him to some of the other options, it's uh, I still think it's okay. I'm less enthusiastic. The move would have obviously the move a couple of weeks ago when we didn't go the, the 120. It's now proven to be a great move. Yeah. Whether or not it's the great move to do from this point on is maybe a different story for those that didn't jump. All right, let's maybe move on to the uh, I guess wrapping this one up because I think that's a. Uh, some of the questions are oh, touching on some of the rookies. Yeah, for trade targets, this is something, yeah, that I am sort of considering as well is is like for a guy like Dempsey, mm-hmm. I, like I just said, he's he's ranked in like it, the top 15 yeah, for, is it too late? for like forward line scorers. You know, is is it too late there? Is Do you feel more confident going, you know, if you could go from like, let's say like a five to him, bank a little bit of money, is, is that, you know, a little bit risque? Well, last year, before last year, I would have said, yes, it's too late. But the lessons from last year was a lot of the time where you're paying up for those rookies can really help you out in the long run because there's still plenty of cash to be made. He's still probably got about 150K that he can make um, from his Bulldogs North Melbourne coming up. Uh, so North Melbourne, that's going to be great Bulldogs for him. Bulldogs North with a negative Bulldogs, 13 break even. Think about what Bulldogs gave up to someone similar in his position in the Jack Billings. Like mm. Dempsey's playing a very much a Jack Billings type role. Um, and then North, he's just, you'd, you'd think that's just going to be like... At home youngster. as well. So, uh, look, I don't think it's too late. I think getting a player like him in for that cash generation, depending on how you get there, is maybe the question. Mm. But what if you did a Fife down to him? Yeah. You know? like, or a Billings I'll, down to him? Certainly something I'll consider. I think that I think that's a that's a genuine okay. move, but that's someone you can get in, continue that cash generation, go and probably give you a similar sort of score, um, and maybe you can use that to get the upgrade on the other side of it. Um, definitely something to consider. Talk um, to me quickly about Harvey Thomas Gallagher. Harvey Thomas, obviously, low break even, coming off a really big score, but has two poor scores. Mm-hmm. Is that enough to to scare you away from him versus a guy like Gallagher? This is where I would let the other move dictate the, the rookie you're bringing in. If you can get Gallagher and still get the guy you want, I think that he is probably a better option. He's had more consistent scoring. His role and, and job security seems a little bit better to me, although he plays for Bevo. Um, so I think he's the guy that if I could, if price wasn't an issue, I'd get him over Harvey Thomas. Harvey Thomas, he's about, what's that, 80K cheaper than, than a Gallagher. So if that 80K is the difference between making a, the other move work for you, then I would, yes, jump on a Harvey Thomas and yeah. make that work. Um, there's a chance that I go neither of these options because I just want to roll with the rookies that I've got that I'm pretty happy with. Um, you've got, uh, I don't know whether this will be reflective of other people's teams, but you, you've you got Dempsey. I, th- I think yeah. there would, there's still a host of people that maybe didn't get Dempsey yep. at the time when he was available. I'm kind of in that boat. And so that makes me feel like, do I need to get one of these rookies for cash? Yeah, yeah. you do might you, need to catch up a bit of cash. Yeah, or is, so is it better to try and generate your cash through rookies like that or you know, backing in a guy like Bonner to still make you an extra 150K mm. or whatever it is? It's kind of a... a it's a very a, hard question to answer and it's, mm. it's, it's why this round in particular is going to be a very difficult round of trading. Um, I think that for this week, I'd be prioritizing getting the players out of your side that are burning a hole in your pocket. Okay. Because I think there'll still be opportunity for more rookies to show their heads later in the season, um, rather than prioritizing getting the really low break evens. Because I think that was more the first couple of rounds. I think this round is defined by getting those shit scorers out of your side, yeah. um, so they're not going to really, like I said, burn a hole in your pocket, and you're going to be stuck with them. I think that's that's the way I'd be trying to view this round personally. But we'll have to wait and see and see what is the right call after the next couple of weeks. That's going to be... That's the the aim of the game there. You know something else that... uh, Like, this has got nothing to do with anything that we were just talking about. But set shots. Yeah. Why do we have to wait 30 seconds? The worst. The worst. (laughs) Is this this just us sitting there on the couch just thinking that every set shot is the worst thing in the world unless it's your player having the set shot? It's 30 seconds where your players can't score. No one's scoring. And then... When a oh, player and they just chip it into the the top of the square. Correct. Takes thirty seconds and then just lays it up. Penalty, I reckon. That's that's a that's a free kick. That every day of the week that should be a free kick. <laughs> it is, if you, especially when you're like riding a player hard yeah. and they're not scoring well and they need every or and you when, just know as well, like you know this guy's not going to try and kick a goal. He's correct. just wasting He's time. Like, Line up. Everyone in the stadium knows it. Or set shots 
for goal that result in misses when your player is trying to get back on the field a la Isaac oh, Heaney, our captain. Isaac Heaney 10, minutes on, 10 minutes on the bench in like the second quarter or something where the they could not, you know, hit the side of a barn. There's so many there's so many little gripes that you'd, you'd have, like little things that really just, you know. We ride it too hard. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we ride it far <laughs> too hard. Do. It's, it's not... all part of the fun, but that will do it for us today, guys. We've got another early game on Friday. So another early live show. Typically, we like to go about a couple hours before that first game. So... The game on Friday, we've got the Thursday night game, Adelaide versus Melbourne, which we will be doing a little bit of big boys action on Twitter. So look out for that one. There will be a couple of big boys in that game. Uh, And on the Friday, we've got Lions versus North Melbourne at 4.10 our time. So 5.10 Melbourne time. So that means we'll be probably doing our live show at about 3 o'clock Melbourne time, 2 o'clock. Uh, Brisbane time. So stay tuned for that one there on the Friday. And then after that, we probably got back to our normal times. Daylight savings are over. And we still have to still have to worry about all these different time zones. Killer. And it'll be a little bit easier to communicate with you guys. But until then, guys, like and subscribe the video. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you do know when our live shows are going live. And you can jump on and get your questions answered. View the big boys. And until then, guys, good luck with your trades. And we'll see you then. Bye.